First, close all the windows or curtains to provide some privacy for the patient. Next, make sure to perform proper hand washing or sanitation first before going to the patient to avoid the spread of microorganisms. Next, introduce yourself to the patient and explain the purpose of the assessment. Hi ma'am, good morning. I'm Carmela, a student nurse of Baker University and I'm here to assess your heart, peripheral and vascular system as well as your abdomen. So the assessment, this assessment ma'am will serve as your baseline data so that we could help you prevent any further damage that will arise in the future as well as to have a clear understanding in regard to your health in the state of the parts that I mentioned earlier. So is it okay ma'am? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going first to test the neck vessels of the patient. In assessing the neck vessels of the patient, start by auscultating first the carotid arteries and inspect for some roots using the bell part of the stethoscope. Can you breathe in? Out, then hold. On the other side, breathe in, out, then hold. Okay. Now, we'll proceed in palpating each of the patient's carotid arteries by placing the patient first in a supine position, about 15 to 45 degrees, then looking for an amplitude and contour of the pulse, elasticity of vessels, and drill. Now, I want you to turn your head slightly on the left while I'm palpating your right carotid artery. On the other side, okay. So now I'm going to inspect for the jugular venous of the patient, which is located on the sternal and the clavicular heads of the sternocleidomastoid. massa. Since the jugular venous pressure is rarely palpable, we need to use a light to better visualize the point where the jugular venous pressure pulsates. Next is to measure the jugular venous pressure of the patient. Okay. okay. So next is the assessment of the heart or the precordium. So, inspect first for a visible pulsation of the precordium around here. So, inspect. Then, palpate the apical pulse for location, size, strength, and duration of the pulsation. So, the apical pulse can be found on the fifth intercostal rib starting below the sternum. So next is to palpate for an abnormal pulsation or vibrations at the apex, left sternal border, and the base. Okay. Then, auscultate the heart sounds for their rate and rhythm, specifically the apical and the radial pulses. Then, notice any pulse rate deficit and also take note of the S1 and the S2 sounds. Then auscultate the S1 and the S2 heart sounds for sound location and strength pattern. Take note also of its strength, location, and the splitting of the S2. Next. 
Next is to auscultate again for extra hard sounds and murmurs or the presence of the S3 and the S4 sounds. Also, notice for any irregular patterns, pitch, and intensity grade or the effect of the ventilation or the position. is to auscultate the client for any abnormal sounds by placing him by placing her in a left lateral position. Okay. The patient sitting up Then the patient leaning forward. Then exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So now, we'll proceed in examining the peripheral vascular system of the patient. I'll start by examining her upper extremities through inspection of both her arms. If there's a presence of edema and venous patterning. Okay, slightly raise your hands and hold it steadily. Okay, so I'm now looking on the color of the patient's skin. And then inspect for any clubbing in the fingertips. Then palpating the fingers, hands, and arms of the patient. Okay, next is to check for the temperature of the arms all the way to the fingertips using the dorsal surface of the fingers. Lastly, check the pulses. Palpate the radial and the ulnar pulses. So first is the radial. Okay. Then the ulnar. Then the other side. Okay. Now the brachial pulses. Okay. Now we'll proceed to the lower extremities, the examination of the legs by placing the patient in a supine position for about 15 to 45 degrees angle. I'm now looking again for the symmetrical skin color of the patient. Okay. Then inspecting for the even distribution of the hair. Now inspecting for some visible lesions or ulcers while taking note of its location such as its depth, drainage, and other as well as the margin texture whether it is smooth or even. In checking the lesions of the patient, you can use a um, gloves to inspect it. Okay. In now inspect for an edema, unilateral or bilateral, by checking the calves circumference and if it is symmetrical. Okay. Then palpate for the temperature of the skin again using dorsal surface of the hands. Okay, so next is the palpate for the superficial inguinal lymph nodes while keeping the 
genitals great pa Okay. We go now in palpating and auscultating the femoral pulses over artery and listen for some roots. So next is to palpate the popliteal, which can be found on the middle of the popliteal fossa. Okay. Next is the dorsalis pedis, which can be found between the medial malleolus or the bony part of the ankle bone and the Achilles tendon, which can be found here. So next is the posterior tibial pulses, which can be found near the EHL tendon, which is the one that helped the big toe to stand. Lastly is to inspect for varicosities and thromboclavities by asking the patient to stand. Okay, stand, stand straight. Okay, so we'll proceed in assessing the abdomen of the patient. Start by inspecting the abdomen skin integrity and take note of its color, vascularity, stray, if there are some visible scars and lesions, then the umbilicus, its location if it's, if it's on the middle, including its color. Then observe if there are abdominal contours as well as if it's symmetrical. So you can ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold it to make the liver and spleen more obvious. Okay, breathe in and out. So also check for an abdo abdominal movement associated with respiration, aortic pulsation, or the peristaltic waves. So observe also for the vascular, vascular pattern as well. So next is to auscultate the abdomen for bowel sounds, noting the intensity, pitch, and the frequency. In the right lower quadrant, then on the upper, right upper quadrant, then on the left lower quadrant, then left upper quadrant. Then, next is listening for vascular sounds and friction. Next is listening for vascular sounds and friction rubs of the aortic, renal arteries, femoral arteries, and the iliac arteries using the bell of the cell. Next is the renal arteries. The next is the area artery. Then the femoral arteries. Next is to percuss the abdomen for tone in each of the four quadrants to determine the presence of um, tympany and the dullness. Then 
Then next is the liver. Next is to perform the scratch test by placing the stethoscope on the chest below the siphoid process. Then lightly scratch the abdominal skin in the right right lower quadrant with finger tail parallel to the um, expected live border. Then gradually moving the the fingertips cranially towards the ribcage. Then next is to percuss the the spleen. Okay, then perform blunt percussion on the liver and the kidneys. Okay, then proceed in performing the light palpation, noting tenderness or guarding in all four quadrants. Then, next is to palpate all the quadrants again, but using now deep palpation, then noticing the presence of masses or the tenderness. Then the umbilicus. Then the aorta. Next is the liver, noting the consistency and the tenderness. Then, same with the spleen, palpate it also and take note if there were some tenderness and its consistency. Then the kidneys. Lastly is to palpate the urinary bladder which is above the pubic symphysis for any possible urinary retention.
Lastly, don't forget to sanitize or wash your hands and document all the findings.